In today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at the tropics. As we always do, we're also going to be diving into that upcoming pattern where I have a couple of major storms to tell you guys about today. Even a Rocky Mountain big time snowstorm that we have to discuss. Also a nor'easter on the way that could cause major impacts for the mid-Atlantic and northeast. And again, that tropical activity, some of which could impact the United States course. So we're going to be talking about that. Among that, we also have the temperature pattern where we expect some big cool downs to take place very soon. So that is going to be pretty concerning. Uh, one is ongoing. We do expect that to follow up with another. And we have some long-term evidence in the long range that there could be some more cool downs on the way down the road. So we need to discuss all of these things today. But before we dive into it, be sure to check out Prestige Weather in the description and the pinned comment down below. It's only $5 a month and we offer early access to all of our monthly and seasonal outlooks. We also do weekly consulting calls and other consulting services within our community. Be sure to check it out today again in the pinned comment and description down below. As we take a look at this tropical activity, as you can see, we do also have a slight risk here going on and this is really where we want to talk about the most. So we have this yellow area. I said, I said slight risk, that's severe weather, but we're talking about the tropics here. I guess it makes sense because it's yellow, but we do have a 20% chance of development here, both over the next 48 hours and the next seven days. So yes, the chance is relatively low right now. This could go up over time. And we've been kind of pinpointing the, the Gulf of Mexico for some tropical activity. And sure enough, we do see that taking place now. Very, very interesting. Now, probably all of you are kind of thinking about this red area over here that we've been discussing for a couple of days. The percentages have gone up pretty significantly. You can't see it on screen because it's kind of off to the corner. Nope, can't see it still. But we do have a 70% chance over the next 48 hours and an 80% chance over the next seven days. So the chance in the short term is climbing rapidly. The chance over the long range is standing still at a very high 80% chance. So we still expect this one to develop. Now, let's dive into the upcoming pattern overall, and I want to discuss a couple of these storms with you. Let's reach tomorrow because this video is coming out a little bit late, and we can see that there is a lot of activity moving onshore to the northwest and the southwest of Canada. Mostly, at this point, a 991 millibar low pressure center there over British Columbia. This is causing a lot of rainfall and snowfall for states like Washington, Oregon, California, even into Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming there. Very interesting. Let's keep going. And as we reach Wednesday, we see that this all kind of transfers. This is our original low. We see a lot of this energy transferring very far south here to the plains in the form of this nine, I think it's a 989 millibar low pressure center, which is very, very strong. Let me confirm that. Yeah, that might be a 989. So that is relatively strong and intensifying quickly. And I think the most interesting thing to note here is that we see snowfall developing here for Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, and even portions of Nevada as well. Among the things happening here on screen, we also see a 1,001 millibar low pressure center developing in the Gulf of Mexico. And that is that potential tropical activity. We do see that taking place at this frame, so definitely worth noting. We can see a pretty heavy precipitation field in here as well around it, so this is a very healthy storm. And even if it doesn't develop in a tropical sense, it is a highly impactful storm regardless, so I don't want you guys to think that if it's not tropical, it doesn't matter. It certainly does, and this is going to lead to impacts, especially for Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina, regardless of what ends up taking place. 991 here for Kansas and Nebraska, still bringing very heavy snowfall here to the Rockies. So we're seeing increasing snow totals there probably as opposed to what we saw yesterday. Um, we do see some thunderstorms potentially here on this front end along this warm front. So the jet stream here doing a very intense kind of curve around right there as this low pressure system climbs. That warm front begins to climb as well. And we see warm air pushing rapidly here on the eastern end of things while cold air is diving southward on the western end of things. And again, this is by Thursday the 12th. Let's reach, there's our daily emojis, let's reach towards Friday. And as you can see, we have a 990 now over Iowa and Nebraska there. Very heavy precipitation. And now we're developing a little bit of a cold front, it appears, underneath. Warm front still sitting somewhere up here. So we're seeing the warmth try to push northward here on the eastern end, but very rapidly 
this cold air is swinging around underneath and moving in in a hurry. We do see this tropical activity again, whether it's tropical or non-tropical, we do see activity of some sort here for the southeast. That is also still taking place by the time of reaching the weekend. Saturday the 14th here, we see this all kind of merges into one 997 millibar low pressure center. And this is a part of the video that I really want to show you guys something that has changed in the projection. We originally saw an original low develop move into eastern Canada. And then we would see a secondary low develop underneath where a lot of that energy would transfer from this primary low up here in Canada down to the coastal more nor'easter storm. And then it would develop from that point. We're seeing a big change here today. What we're seeing is that this original low just kind of slides offshore and becomes the nor'easter. Um, so we're not seeing any transferring. We're not seeing anything like that. This one starts very low and it lowers from that point. So we could see a stronger storm than even originally anticipated. We can see we have a lot of precipitation going on near the low pressure system, but we still have this kind of cold front underneath, maybe even stretching down to Mexico there. And this is where we're seeing a trough develop just behind this. And this is going to move all the way to the eastern United States once it passes. For Sunday here on the 15th, what we see is now a 983 millibar low pressure center here over the mid-Atlantic and northeast. And this is certainly bringing very major impacts, both in the form of rainfall and very strong winds. So all of these impacts are going to bring uh, with it just a bunch of concerns, obviously, especially when we're talking about the mid-Atlantic and northeast, these coastal areas. There's a bunch that goes into it and a lot of things that can end up happening. Jet stream at this point is doing something like this, maybe even a little bit more east based than that. So a ridge in the west and now this trough in the east. And we're going to see a very similar weekend next weekend to the one that we're seeing this weekend, which is obviously very cold compared to normal. Feels much more like November. We're going to see back to back weekends like that, it appears. I'm going to take us towards Monday. Let's see what's going on. And we can see this low is still very strong at about 990 millibars, but we see that it is moving offshore very rapidly. And within this trough, we do have these showery bits. It's going to be dreary, drizzly, cloudy, probably. That is the type of weather we're seeing here in this circle. Maybe some areas of heavier, more consistent rainfall, but mostly just that kind of all over the place sprinkling uh, and very cloudy, dreary conditions. We do have another storm system moving on toward the northwest here by Monday, October 16th. And by Tuesday, October 17th, we see a 1,000 millibar low pressure center developing here. Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, and Utah now seeing snowfall from that one. And what we see is that kind of transfers backwards, and we continue to see this low bringing impacts. Now we're seeing kind of some thunderstorms, as you can see, developing out ahead of it. Still some wintry weather taking place for Colorado and Wyoming. So definitely a very interesting storm. And we do see that this develops into a little bit more of an intense thunderstorm, maybe even severe weather event here for Texas and Oklahoma. Very similar to the one we just saw, I guess it was about a week ago now. So very, very interesting. That was long-winded. Let's move into the total precipitation. And as you can see, we have a lot of precipitation here for the Northwest. A lot, I'm just gonna underline it, but here for the Plains, Rockies, and Upper Midwest, and even into the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic where we have that Nor'easter eventually developing. And then underlining here in the southeast, this tropical activity also leads to a lot of activity in the form of heavy rainfall. Now, the temperature pattern is very, very interesting. I want to show you guys this. We see the cool down kind of hangs around. We get this very brief warm up sometime around Thursday, Friday, Saturday time frame. But look at this. We have our next Arctic air mass setting up for Sunday into Monday. That's the 15th into the 16th here. So very cool air, warm air surging northward. Very, very interesting. As we keep going, this one wants to just stick around all the way to the end of the model run, which will be the 19th. That's going to be a Thursday. So again, cold air in the east, warmer air in the west still. Let's move into the long range pattern. And we do see that this sticks around, but it does come to an end right around the beginning of November time frame is when this model wants to flip us into what's called a positive PNA or better yet, negative PNA pattern here. And this causes the warmth to surge into the east, as opposed to that positive PNA, which causes the opposite. I'll show you that right here. Let's go to the, a very lo positive looking PNA. There we go. So we see the opposite here. Warmth, that's a positive PNA, and that causes cold to surge into the eastern United States. You can see it's a very, very much so the opposite. As we keep going through November, though, uh, we can see that until about the midpoint, we stay warm in the east here. Take this all with a grain of salt, by the way, as it is very far out. But we do see a cool down uh, kind of 
come back to the eastern states here by about the 18th to 23rd time frame. Again, take it with a grain of salt. This is very far out. But we do get a little bit of a neutral PNA where there's some areas showing positive. And then as we look at Alaska and Western Canada, it is looking quite negative. So this would be about neutral, I would say. But still, we get the effects of that positive PNA and we get cold in the east. It can kind of go either way, but that's what we see here. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I do appreciate all of you watching. Be sure to subscribe for more weather-related content and videos just like this one. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when I upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.